Final word, Adam Collins, Jeff Lemon. And with us, we have, well, occasional co-host of the show, uh, the man who makes all our social media channels sing. He's, at the moment, the Washington Freedoms Media Manager in Major League Cricket in America, Cam Ponsonby. Cam, uh, hello to you. I have no idea where you are. I have no idea really what you're doing. And that's why we're getting you on to tell us all about this Major League Cricket thing and, and what doing. Yeah, it's been... <clears throat> It's an unusual kind of month for me as well. I'm I'm in I'm in Houston. I'm on the twentieth floor of the Western Galeria in Houston, just to dox myself uh, immediately. <laughs> uh, we're going off going off to Dallas in about a week where the tournament starts. Um, yeah, this kind of it's this tournament's been in in the works for a number of years. Basically, it's kind of start. There's been minor league cricket uh, for a few years, and there's been a lot of players. Kind of they they pumped money into the system and they got a lot of players from South Africa, for instance, to come over. And in my mind, like not the official term kind of play kind of green card cricket, where you come over, you've got a long-term potential here of like stability for your family, come over, let's build cricket from the ground up. That's gone on for a number of years. And now this is the first year where that's turning into major league cricket. And it's the first fully professional American league with big overseas players coming in. And I think somewhere where I, granted, you've got to listen to all this in the caveat and context of me being like paid and paid employee of the league, but somewhere where I kind of park my cynicism that kind of exists for other kind of kind of out of the ground new franchise tournaments is there is a huge cricket fan base here. So chatting to some of the players here, the local players they go, you will not believe how much cricket there is in the US. You can play 12 months a year, no problem. And something that reflects what we hear from kind of chatting to colleagues at Crick Info is if you look through um, kind of top readerships by nations, it often goes India, UK, USA. And that's the same for some broadcast deals. And there's basically this massive um, diluted fan base in America. You've got 350 million people here. And you've got massive South Asian, Caribbean, English community. So there's an appetite for the game. It's just it's spread out everywhere. And now they are, uh, like, for want of a better phrase, kind of throwing money at it and going, now or never, let, let's give it a crack. And that crack starts in, what, three or four days, basically, uh, with Texas Super Kings versus someone else who I can't remember. <laughs> the big one, the grudge match. Yeah. Finally, they're going to sell it. The El Clasico. It. Yeah, it's it when Kevin Sheedy got his jacket and waved it around yes. his head. Oh, that's when the Super Kings got mad. Now, the the idea, the impression that the MLC is is being pulled together very much on the hoof, um, that, that nobody quite knows what's going on and they're just making it work on the move, is, is supported by the fact that you have a different job to when you arrived 24 hours ago. Is that true? Uh, that's... that's that's a tough. That's a tough one to answer there, Jeff. Um, no, so I, I, I kind of the boring story is I kind of do freelancing for this one company, and I get and that company's doing the socials, and so I got here, and I was going to be doing, and I am still doing the social medias, and they said, do you mind if you kind of handle the media requests as well, which I was fine with because it makes my job sound much more important than it is, and will get me a better job in the future than I deserve <laughs> because I can pretend to have done lots of very. Uh, difficult things so um, you're a, you're a media manager now is that is that i'm a media manager i am i am the danny rubin of, 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 washington, <laughs> of, of washington as you, a whole you are that um, annoying person who gets in the way of us getting the interviews that we want to get that's, that's it's exactly it's, the power is phenomenal it's genuinely i've already had the thrill of like people messaging going like can i have a chat i'm like maybe maybe <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe go on um but no i think so there's kind of seven different entities that you have major league cricket as a whole and major league cricket is separate to cricket USA or USA cricket, whatever. And I'm sure in the same way there is in every uh, country, there's kind of politics and kind of people busting heads in that context. The six teams you have, four of them have IPL um, involvement or ownership mm. involved. Um, and the other two have partnerships with Australian boards. So Washington, Washington Freedom, has a partnership with Cricket New South Wales. So that means from an administrative point of view, uh, like Michael Klinger is over his general manager and he's the director of New South Wales Cricket. Greg Ship is the coach. A lot of the backroom staff is the same. Right. And so from that kind of standing point, um, you have kind of people who know what they're doing, kind of they've been brought in to kind of operate this new T20 team. And if, well, New South Wales operate two T20 teams, Thunder and the Sixers, so they're pretty experienced on that front. San Francisco has a tie-up with Cricket Victoria. And then the other four teams are all kind of IPL-owned. So there's a lot of kind of kind of heavyweight 
cricket hitters involved in the individual runnings of each team. Um, because there is just, there, there's, it's the unicorn, isn't it? Like if, if it's been asked literally, for decades, the San Francisco unicorns, literally, literally the San Francisco unicorns who are, I mean, I haven't met them yet. I'm sure they're lovely. Um, this kind of question of, can you break the U S has existed forever? And there was an article that cricket.com.au did. I can't remember who they interviewed. They interviewed a number of um, kind of Aussie people involved in the setting up of major league cricket. And um, there was this kind of now or never feel to it. It was like, we're mm. never going to have the same like amount of cash, the amount of high profile backing all coming in at one go. And so it will, it will be interesting. I kind of, I kind of um, have this feeling where it kind of, I, I don't know if I can really say this, I kind of feel like it will almost be because it's new and the domestic players are not necessarily kind of grassroots USA players, but adult players who have been successful elsewhere who are looking for their life beyond cricket. It can almost be so fake it becomes real. So if you look at the Major League Cricket team, if you look at Washington's team, for example, I think it's you need six overseas players and you've got incredibly high quality players playing. And then the local players, you have two lads who have played international cricket for Pakistan and you have a lad called Andrew Scouse, who's a fantastic cricketer and averages 40 in South African first-class cricket. Those guys can play this game, like they're serious players. And so the quality of cricket on show is going to be really high. And you combine that with this kind of enough of a cricket appetite where the first game of the tournament and hopefully beyond is sold out. You're going to have good players playing in front of big crowds. So, and that's all you kind of what else really matters mm. after that mm. that's kind of the main ingredient you mentioned the indian influence or the ipl influence rather with three clubs there and i didn't realize about the, the cricket new south wales piece to this or cricket victoria that that's quite interesting um but also that there's this um there's this uh well i'm not sure if rivalry is the right word but there, there is going to be uh, competition one way or another with the hundred and with domestic cricket in england given the time of year that it operates jason roy is playing in america um he obviously had to um part ways with his incremental ecb contract in order to do that because he wasn't going to get an noc otherwise but um can you just talk to that idea that the hundred in england which is obviously such an important part of the future as far as the ecb see um, a diversified revenue stream away from test cricket and all the rest of it, H how that runs into the MLC. And at the same time, I read a piece this morning about how um, they, in America, want to get as many England players as possible, which makes sense given they're the dual world champions in white ball cricket. Um, I I'll be interested to see how that, because obviously I, I haven't heard this in like an official capacity at all. I've just read the same articles that everyone else has about MLC wanting to grow and expand and kind of then that old approach on the 100 I'll be interested to see how that plays because this tournament at the moment is very attractive to Aussie players in particular because it is in their off season and it's and, it, and it's short at the moment, mm. so you can come over from Australia next year. There's no te Australian Test cricket um, at, during this time, so there's kind of I, I wouldn't be surprised to see teams across the board, not just the two Australian kind of linked up teams, trying to get more Aussie players in. But then once as soon as you kind of expand outwards and become bigger, you make yourself a less convenient. Uh, kind of port of call. Uh, I don't know. Yes, it will go up against um, the hundred just by nature of where it is in the calendar. And yes, I get. I guess it could be the first real glaring example of kind of cash versus history or however you want to play it because these guys, the the, the contracts that the overseas players are getting are are very lucrative, and that's why I think. The maths of like Jason Roy's thing went that the, the incremental contracts were like 60 grand a year and he gave up the last 20 of it to earn another 700 gazillion pounds here. Like it was mathematically, <laughs> it's a no brainer. Um, but I, I don't think, I think it's kind of a bridge that will, will kind of cross that bridge when it comes because the tournament needs okay. to be a success first. And then it will, if it expands, then players might have a, a, the debate of whether to come over here instead. But if the tournament's not, a success and that doesn't really happen i don't know if i i haven't mean to half answer that half ask that question that's not a corporate answer that's a mm. i'm not really sure to be honest adam mm. answer what about the the concern that you raised online that, that's reflected in your case of uh, young test match journalists rejecting <laughs> test central contracts in order to join these freelance leagues and suddenly be, get promoted to media manager I think it's, it's a very concerning, a grave concern for journalists across across the, the world, really. Um, 
men's ashes. Test cricket is dying. It's all about the Seattle Orcas versus Washington Freedom. Yeah. So, and how much how much of a Washington vibe is there? Considering you're going to play the entire tournament in Texas yeah. with a bit of North Carolina. Um, yeah. How 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 much connection do you feel with DC? You know, how much are people on the streets of DC um, <laughs> concerned with the fortunes of the freedom? Who's getting in touch? Are they talking about it in Congress? You know, are they are they going yeah. to storm the house once again if say the freedom have a bad season? So Barrack, Donald and Joe have all been in touch. Uh, they're very, it's on, it's on the top of their kind of thought process at the moment. Uh, no, so something I heard the other day, which is quite interesting, the way that they chose where the teams were, they kind of went into kind of broadcast demographics and they saw which towns in, and cities in the US were were the most interested in cricket. Where, where's watching cricket the most? And that's how they kind of picked the locations. Um, realistically at the moment, so the owner of, of Washington Freedom is Sanjay Govill, who has got a, kind of a base in um, Washington, that's kind of his connection there. So there's a genuine fact, like familial, I think is the word, connection to Washington. At the moment, of course, with a tournament based in Texas and then North Carolina, that isn't uh, necessarily that tangible at the moment. But the plan is from 2025, if everything goes well, that there's going to be, that. that's the year that it stops being a tournament played in one hub. And the expansion of the tournament means it'll be played in a lot in every different location. So Washington mm. will have their own matches in Washington. The plan is to be, there's going to be a stadium built um, at George Mason University or like a joint baseball cricket tie up. And that's the kind of idea you have these kind of two years of it being on the ground, all in one place. And then once the tournament expands, then Texas will be playing in Texas. Washington will be playing in Washington. And in theory, the planning has been that these locations are where there are strong cricketing communities. And so, for instance, the, where we go to North Carolina, we're going to Morrisville, and that's a town with a, a massive South Asian population. They already have a minor league cricket team. So the reason it's going there is because kind of taking the horse to water at the moment, that's where the kind of cricket fan base is, hopefully. Cam, we're mindful you've got training to get to. You've got media to manage. Remember that when you're talking to a journalist, you've got to go on background if you want to talk. Otherwise, we'll quote you. Um, you don't have to accept the premise of a question when a journalist speaks to you either. Um, I look forward to your first bollocking of a reporter when they write something horrible about the Washington Freedom as well. Whenever that time comes, I look forward to you getting on the end of the phone and giving them what for. All the things that are part and parcel with being the media manager. I can't wait. I can't wait to listen to your assessment of my Major League Cricket, then have to complain to you and clip up the media <laughs> clip at the same time. <laughs> And then feed back into my bosses here as well. So, yeah, it's all very simple. <laughs> Not problematic at all. Uh, Cam, uh, good luck over there. In all seriousness, it's great that you've got this opportunity and I hope the comps Thanks, are success mate. and that you get everything out of it that you want. We'll check it in a couple of weeks. Perfect. Thanks, lads. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers.